So welcome along to iPhotography. Um, today, we're gonna be having a look at photographing textures. It's a very simple in terms of its nature of, of kind of a subject matter as well. But I think it teaches photographers quite a bit about different or how different materials react under the same type of lighting. Now I've just got kind of literally picked out a range of different objects from around the studio. I've got um, a cover here. This is made of kind of Harris tweed. It's quite dark and it's quite heavy, so it may require a little bit more in the way of lighting. And then I've got a sock that I've just inverted here because I thought this is kind of quite nice to see all the stitching upon it. I've also then got some other bits and pieces. I've got a tennis ball here. So again, with this being a little bit lighter, this may again react a little bit differently. Then also go into some more natural textures. I've picked out um, this kind of part of this wood bark here. Uh, and again, we've got some great detail just where some of it's come off, some where some of it's, you know, a little bit more kind of cleaner. And also then we've got obviously the sides here so we can see the cut through. And I just thought it'd be a really, really interesting texture to kind of play along with in comparison to some man-made ones. And I've also uh, got this, it's like a little lid that sits on some of these um, tea light candles. Um, but it's got all these fantastic kind of cracked glass uh, and kind of crystallized look here. Um, so I think all these under, the same conditions in terms of lighting will be interesting to see how different ones react, obviously, because we've got some that are a little bit more metallic, a little bit more shiny. Other ones that are a bit more muted, they're not going to reflect um, light as much. So I think it's a very, very good look at how we set up our camera, how we approach photographing different textures, because textures are all around us in the world. Wherever we go, whether it's out into nature, whether it's into towns and cities. And I think understanding the way that light either bounces off or is absorbed by these different textures will help us understand camera settings a little bit more. But also just as an independent project on its own, photographing lots of different textures close up can look absolutely great as some sort of collage. So I'm gonna basically set myself up on the table in front of us here. I'll talk through the camera settings, I'll talk through what lens I'm using, etc. cetera here, um, and just try and play around with the lighting and just talk about how how we maybe need to bring it a bit closer, a bit further away, make things a bit brighter, a bit darker, to try and get the best image possible and what that best image looks like per material. So let's get started. So now that we've got ourselves set up here, it's very, very simple. As I say, it, it's just really a case of now, Using the lens that you've got that's going to give you the closest focus distance and the, the, the shortest minimal focus distance you could say. So I'm just going to start off, I am just going to start off with taking some shots of this piece of wooden bark here. Some of it's still got the bark on, then you obviously got the insides in there. Just to help out, because I've got a lot of little bits of pieces on here, I'm going to use this other texture, this kind of nice orange fabric. It's kind of two tones, so a bit lighter, a bit darker here. I'm going to try and avoid capturing the uh, the frayed edges a little bit here because this is meant to be about the wood. I'm just using this really as a as a background to it really so I don't capture anything in here that I don't really want to have in the shot. And if anything, it's quite a nice little task to um, conflict or contrast types of textures as well. So obviously here we've got this kind of rough natural bark um, against this slightly more uh, a modern but a smoother finished um, texture here with the, I don't know what it is, it's not exactly silk, maybe it's some sort of silk blend potentially, either way, I'm not getting into the fashion of it just yet. So yeah, all I'm going to try and do is just kind of create ourselves a little scenario where we've got a nice contrast between the rough and the smooth. Um, I've set my lighting up here, Kind of, I can't I want to keep it fairly standardised because I want to see how light reacts differently with each of the textures. So in terms of the camera and the camera setting, I'm not going to use anything specifically exotic or anything like that. Um, I'm slowing down my shutter speed to around about 1 25th. Um, my aperture, the widest this lens will go is down to 1.4, but I'm not going to go that wide. I'm going to say around about f2, because I want it to be quite shallow, um, but I want to be able to kind of get close in at the same time. So I just put my strap on there, and then I'm going to get tight in here. I'm just going to use, because I've got a very, very shallow depth of field, I'm just going to kind of pick out one particular area of the wood, and I'm watching how the light reacts, or how the wood reacts with the light, I should say, um, as to kind of where my position is. So I'm gonna get close in here. I'm just gonna make sure that I'm on a small, flexible spot focus, because I'm using a very, very 
shallow depth of field because it's going to be one small area that's actually in focus here. So I think I'm sharp there. There we go. So I'm just going to try one more time, but I'm going to flip around the wood. I'm going to just turn the angle a little bit. So we're following along. You can possibly see uh, the lines on the wood here. So I'm going to use those as my leading lines and I'm going to shoot across. So we're creating a leading line using the actual texture itself. So blending the composition in with the subject matter. We've got a few more uh, little divots. So they do create shadows. They're not so pronounced there because the light's falling straight onto them. But as soon as I turn it away, they become a little bit more pronounced. So I'm going to keep it like that. I'm going to raise it a bit higher. And we're just going to photograph the end of it instead. And just so we can see the difference between when the light is flat on and when it's ever so slightly turned just to give us much more in the way of shape and depth and detail from there. So that's a really, really good start. So I'm just going to carry on. I may actually continue to use this. Uh... Actually, no, I won't. I'm going to change my mind. <laughs> I'm that decisive. Right, I'm going to change now up to something a little bit different. I'm probably going to need a different lens because with the sock here, I've got a very, very wide angle lens on that camera. It's going to cover and capture in so much more of this wood, which I've kind of done the contrast already between the kind of, uh, you know, the, the man-made and the natural fibers, etc. So I'm going to switch it up to a macro lens instead. So let's get rid of that. Let's bring in the macro. So that's all attached on there. Let's put that out of the way for the minute. And then we're going to carry on, exact same thing, but now I'm going to get a lot closer in obviously because this time we're working with a much smaller subject, so we just have to be kind of using the appropriate lens. So now this time I'm just looking for one particular element about this sock, just one area of it that I want to focus on just so I can make that the main feature. So I'm going to pick out one particular area, make sure I'm framed up nice and tightly and trying to avoid any of the table being in the shot there. So camera settings, I'm very similar to how we were before, actually, I've not changed anything. We're at 3.5, f3.5, 1 60th of a second, and 320 ISO. We're using single spot focus, and we're just picking out one particular area, getting in super close, and taking those shots. So I always like to take two or three shots um, at the same time, uh, one being vertical, and another couple in horizontal, because I don't necessarily know how I want to use this shot, how I want to crop it. I may want to look at it in context of the other images, put some sort of collage together. Um, so taking a couple kind of in different orientations is sometimes quite useful. Now we've got a couple of different tones on the socks as well. And um, we've got a few little <laughs> fibers that are meant to be there. So I'm just going to try and now incorporate some of the other colors that are on there so we can show up a bit of a mixture. And also by curling the sock around, we're creating a bit of shadow uh, in some of the areas it's not reaching, therefore we're creating a bit of depth. And overall, it's starting to look kind of an abstract shot because we are so close in here. And we just take a couple vertical. So we've created ourselves a nice line, if you can see. If we can almost spin around, we're following the line here. This creates a nice leading line in the shot to cut through, and it gives us a bit of depth between these two areas. So, a sock. That's as simple as that, really. And this is as simple and as fun as photography can be. Now, let's bring in this um, Harris Tweed here. As I said at the start, it's much darker. So I think it's going to require maybe a little bit more light. So we may either need to bump up the exposure in camera, maybe bring the lights in that we've got around here. But we'll keep again with the macro lens because it's very, very small. and We need to get nice and tight in. So I'm going to bump up. We're at 320 ISO. I'm going to go to 500. So the focus point hasn't changed. I've just picked out part of the pattern that we can see here. We can see even though we aren't, we haven't, well, we have changed the exposure a little bit, but we were required to do that because of how dark the colors here are. So I'm going to try also kind of like an overhead shot. So I'm going to bring my screen out to the side a little bit and take that from there. And just get a little bit closer in. Now everything looks a lot flatter. Even though it's on the back of a screen here, it doesn't look that dramatic, that interesting necessarily. So I'm going to come back down, make sure 
when using the light as best as possible, and also incorporate this time the actual leather boundary to the edge of the wallet. So again, we're kind of showing those different contrasts of the textures, the two together. But using one single light predominantly, we've got this light, it's coming in a little bit at the side, but my arm's blocking a part of it. And it's a nice contrast between the rough texture of the leather and then the very kind of fibrous texture of the tweed there. So that's that one down. One more to go. And this time I wanted to use something a little bit more sparkly, a little bit more glamorous, let's say. But at least something that's going to give us more in the way of reflections, which could be a good thing, could be a bit of a nightmare. We shall see. Now depending upon where the light is actually falling, obviously we're gonna get a little bit more light here and there, and we should get a darker area in the middle. So I'm actually just gonna start off with a simple shot like that, still continuing on the macro lens. Now, because it's darker on the side that's closest to me here, it's gonna be a heck of a lot harder to focus. So what I will have to do is effectively just shift my focus point to one side or another. So even though I can't do that by moving the spot, I can basically kind of set the focus point move the camera across and take the shot from there. So what we'll end up having is an area of this dome, this uh, this kind of rooftop for the candles here, um, where it's quite dark in the center and it will be out of focus. And as our eyes move to the side, it will end up being more in focus. Now that necessarily may not be the best option. What we may prefer is to actually have a little bit of light on the front. So if you've got spare lights, you could bring them around. I could use a light that's on my phone to illuminate the front here. I could alternatively use a flash. Now, on-camera flashes I'm never a big fan of, but they are there for emergency uses in one sense, but potentially creative uses. And this is a shot that's not meant to be too literal. It is creative. It isn't so literal in terms of it being a story about a person or a landscape really. We are just looking to try and bring out the detail. So if we can do that by a flash or any of the means of lighting as well, then I would say go for it. So now I'm bringing open that flash. I'm focusing in the middle. So on the closest side to me, which was dark before. And there we go. So we tried it. Now, What's happened is the flash has caused um, or created a shadow from the front of the lens here on the on the lower side of the dome here, which is kind of quite nice because it gives us a slightly abstract look. So we get a clear area of light and some area of shadow. I'm going to try one more time. So I'm just going to lower the ISO, slow the shutter speed a little bit. Same again. So I'm getting a little bit more detail again. Now, as I said before, I do prefer shooting both ways in terms of a landscape and portrait. Same again, so I'm still getting that shadow on the other side, which is quite cool. And sometimes, depending upon your flash itself, you can kind of tilt it a little bit. It's got a little bit of flexibility in it to tilt. And it's as simple as that. You can literally take any household object, play around with it, get close in. I think that's the main principle, is to be getting close in and making sure it's sharp. But honestly, you can be playing around with blankets, cushions, ornaments fruit from the kitchen, we've got some wood and all the bits and pieces that we've used anyway, but it's just a really nice simple exercise, especially as an indoor project if you can't get out much um, and you still want to practice your photography. But I hope you've enjoyed it, we'll see you soon.